Hello everyone, welcome to Program Strings. I'm Henriette and in this clinic today we are talking about string crossings. And this question has been asked by Eneka, who is from Hungary. So let's listen to what her question is. My question, I have a problem with crossing strings. Uh, what to do? Now it is well worth thinking about your string crossings and this goes for both beginners for intermediate players and for advanced players as well. Even at an advanced level, people think about how they're going to execute their string crossings. Now, before I answer Enika's question, let me point out that you can be part of this series of violin clinic videos as well. So if you have a question about your violin playing, record your question on your phone and send it to me at info at proarmstrings.com and who knows, you might feature in one of these videos as well. Make your video no longer than about one minute. And of course, you must be happy to feature in a video that I'm making in answer to your question, which will stay on this channel. So thank you, Enika, for sending your question. And let me start my answer by thinking about why you might want to be concerned with your string crossings. Now, many violin players in the early stages find that they accidentally hit other strings. While they don't mean to play these, you get other sounds creeping in. And if this sounds familiar, then you're not alone. Almost everyone who starts to learn to play the violin will hear other sounds that you did not mean to play. So this video is going to help you when you find that that is an issue that you have come across as well. Other people might say, I cannot stop myself from jerking my bow when I cross from one string to another. And again, that is something that is very common that we're going to address in this video. So both touching other strings accidentally and jerking your bow are going to be hopefully a lot better by the end of this video. So if you've not already subscribed to this channel, please do so now because you are going to dramatically improve your playing in the course of this video. Now let's have your violin up on your shoulder and let's place the bow in the middle on the D string. And I want you to have a look here. I call this the contact point and it is the point where the bow is in contact with the strings. Now when we cross strings, the angle of the bow changes and I'd like you now to shift your focus to your right elbow because it is your right elbow that is going to help you cross the strings. And really the right elbow is making the string crossings. So let's just practice what I call the seesaw exercise. And I want you to make these string crossings simply by moving your elbow up and down. So if I move my elbow up, my bow will go to the G string. And if I move my elbow down, my bow will move towards the E string. So be careful that you don't do this, okay? And the elbow leads the way, so you only have to focus on your elbow and nothing else. Of course, you make sure that your right shoulder is in its lowest position. Now drop your elbow, watch the bow go right here, and raise your elbow. And this exercise is super useful to know where you are. And now I'd like you to do this little game with me. We're going to start on the G string. So my elbow is in its highest position right there. Now close your eyes and see if you can feel when you go on to the D string. And when you think you're on the D string, open your eyes and check here by looking at the contact point whether you are really on the D string. Close your eyes again. And now we're going to drop your right elbow until you feel that you're on the E string. And then open your eyes and check your contact point. Are you on the E string? And are you still free from this little curve on your violin here? Because we don't want to go too far down that we are touching the violin there because that will give you a scraping sound, you see? Now close your eyes again and let's raise your elbow and let's see if we can feel when you're on the A string. And once you think you're on the A string, open your eyes and you can check whether that is the case. And this way, you're going to learn to feel where the strings are by moving your elbow up and down. 
Now this time I want you to play some open G strings, just short bows here, like that. And whilst you do that, whilst you continue to play those short G strings, gradually move your elbow down and at some point you will hear that your G's, there might be some overlap, a moment where you play both G's and D's, but there will be a point when you hear just the D strings. And then you go and continue and do that, lower your elbow still, but whilst you keep playing those short bows, in a minute I'll do it, but I, it won't work if I talk through my playing, that's why. And then we go all the way back, you see, whilst we play short bows. So we're in the middle of the bow. change from the G string to both G and D, then D, then both D and A, then single A's, then both A's and E's, and then single E's. So now we're going to do the opposite. So we're starting on the E string and we're gradually, very slowly but very evenly, are going to raise our elbow. And as a result you'll find that your bow will go to the G string. So be ready in the middle of the bow. Here we go. level which string will sound. So at this stage for beginners I would recommend you use your elbow to direct your bow across the strings. So if I play a scale and I might play a D scale I start off with my elbow at the level for the D string and now I'm going to the A string so my elbow is slightly lower. my elbow then I've got just the right levels but these are very delicate little changes can you see it's no more than that but it's going to help you define where your strings are for your bow now in a piece of music we're never going to suddenly move from one string to another we're always going to anticipate and then lower the elbow or raise the elbow whilst you play one or two notes before the string crossing. And I'll play this D scale again to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go really slowly and I'll talk while I play. Now I'm already anticipating, can you see this? That I'm having to go to the A string next. So whilst I play this note, my elbow is already going to go to the A string. And I can see here, when I look at my contact point, that my bow is super close to the A string. Now, I'm going to anticipate, by raising my elbow slightly, that I'm going back to the D string. So if I look here in my contact point, I'm just not touching the D string, but I'm getting very close. And those very subtle changes, can you see, are going to make the difference between really smooth string crossings and the jerky ones. You see, and that is less stylish when you play, when you've got a sudden accents when you change from one string to another. Now when you're a beginner, you want to learn this first and really get to grips with the exact levels of your elbow for each string. And I call these string levels and these are really elbow levels, aren't they? When you're a more advanced player, we're going to make those string crossings even rounder and we're using your wrist to round off the string crossings and particularly when your new string comes in an up bow that will make it really nice and round sounding. Did you 
see that? Oh, look, I'm doing a little circle. Can you see that? And this just picks up that E string really nice and evenly. But this is a technique that is more useful for intermediate and advanced players and really brings your playing up to a higher level. So if you're a beginner, don't even think about that at this stage. It'll be more than enough to keep you busy to sort out your elbow levels. Now again, this is a technique that doesn't come overnight, so you want to allow it enough time to settle in your head more than anything. Once your brain gets around it, it'll be easier to do for your arm as well. So please, please, please allow enough time to learn this technique because it is very subtle and it is one of those more advanced movements. So thank you, Enika, for asking this very relevant question. And thank you all for watching. I'm wishing you good luck with your practice. Goodbye.